It's the Daily Talk Show, episode 574. Our mate Simon Taylor back in the building. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the prestigious 574. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's, a, it's an it's anniversary a, number. It's a real thing with numbers. <laughs> I feel like as you uh, as you start getting through them, I don't pick up on it, but it's a very common thing for guests to bring up the number. Uh, this year we've got episode six six six. Oh, yeah. Maybe you should do something special. For that. What, what's people's usual aversion to that? It's just like the devil. Is that right? It's devil's it's, number. Yeah, it's just biblical. What's the number in the hotel that they remove? Level thirteen. Level thirteen. That's mm. nothing to do with that. That's yeah. just bad luck. I guess so. Yeah, it's so funny that they people really put a lot of weight on them. Uh, but you could, yeah. if you have six six six, you should at least all dress up as the devil. devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The episode. Grim Reaper or something. Grim, yeah, that'd be a great um, episode. Simon, when do you think people should stop saying Happy New Year? Uh, never. I think we should just do it endlessly <laughs> forever. <laughs> well, it's like you know the second, yeah, yeah. that first week back at work for a lot I of people this two, week. Two weeks. It's a funny power weeks, move 14th, in June. Yeah, fourteenth. <laughs> <laughs> really say happy, happy New Year. Yeah. Yeah. If you did it in July, people would think you're talking about the financial year <laughs> and you're a real dork. I, I imagine Barefoot gets around it. Happy New Year. Oh, All right, Barefoot. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we've got an accountant here. <laughs> Have you had Barefoot Investor on the show? Uh, no, nah, not yet. But we've, he's been in the you, studio. We, oh, really? He's, he's working on a, a Foxtel documentary and uh, Stan is oh, being man. edited. Oh, so he wants oh, really? it widely viewed. <laughs> yeah, so he can't, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we um no we we did a bunch of he's a client of ours, so we've he's coming on the show at some point, but great. And so he uh, uh I love the bucket system. Yeah. And so he actually uh, he brought in a bucket. We were doing some um not just one filming. Josh, multiple he brought buckets. three. <laughs> And it's a real. You're buckets. doing your finance wrong if it's one bucket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how I used to do my finances. Yeah, you, yeah. but he actually, um, <laughs> for, it was an issue with continuity having so many buckets, because oh. he would put the bucket on the desk, and then the director would say, "Can you remove the bucket just because we need to get a clean shot?" Yeah. And then we. So, so we're we'll, we're going to feature in that. I can't. I mean, do you, I don't. I think I'm going to get the. You, I think yeah. you definitely will because I Tommy basically a did a um a series of videos for people in school, like kids in schools. Mm. Uh, and so he created the and produced the videos for that. It gets shown to the kids before the class. So there mm-hmm. were six videos. Did you learn much about finance in school? Nothing. And it took me ages to, um, I guess I, I was forced to do it because I was self-employed because mm-hmm. I was doing like, you know, entertainment. And so, you know, waiting for corporate gigs, wait, understanding I understood cash flow because I didn't have anything to eat for three weeks. So <laughs> yeah, I'm like, man. oh, I need money now. The pain, so the pain is the solution. But right? I also feel the that- problem. Yeah, exactly. It's just it, it uh, learning how to use you know a spreadsheet. Well, I learned like so I learned Excel and stuff at school, mm. and then actually Did you learned- pass because I didn't. Oh, In really? year twelve IT. It's the reason I failed. Right, <laughs> but I just I uh, yeah Excel is a lifesaver if you can get like automate things on Excel, yeah. it's just, it's the best. And so whenever I have comedians say, oh, I've got any advice, I'm like, learn Excel. Yeah. They're like, nah, about like my stand-up. I'm like, it's not important. Yeah. <laughs> just get your finance right. Learn how to budget, learn how to know that, oh, if I'm not making any money this month, you know, how long can I survive mm. without money? So I, I knew, I lived in New York for what, eight months or mm. whatever, and... I knew exactly how much money to spend per day if I wanted to survive New York without having to get any other work. So if I knew, if I don't pick up any gigs in the next eight months, I can survive until this day spending this much money. And yeah. that is my way of dealing with uh, what people freak out about is in comedy and entertainment. They're like, dude, how do you, do, how do you yeah. like live not knowing where your next paycheck is? Mm-hmm. Excel spreadsheet. Work it out. Do yeah. you think that for you that – system actually uh, motivates you to get the work i mean the the other system is don't think about it and just fucking hope that money comes in yeah that's (laughs) i've seen people but really failing knowing the safety of i know eight months i can last a year Mm. so are you going as hard or does it does it motivate you um yeah so it'll it'll change the priority of the projects Mm. so if i'm struggling then i'm like Oh, or if I know I'm going to struggle soon, I'm like, right, I need to focus on getting some corporate gigs and some club gigs and selling merch and like really pushing things that aren't that enjoyable mm. um, but will get money on the table. If I know I've got like six months or whatever, I'm like, great, I'm going to maybe write a new show. Maybe mm. I'll, I'll work on like a, you know, a, 
a, a sketch, you know, a web sketch or something. So I can do it in that time because mm. I know that the money's not, yeah, not needed. So it will change my priority of project. For sure. What What did you spend your money on in New York? Where did it all, all go? Uh, rent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bought a bike, get around. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, food, like food. And then I guess doing like uh, things you can only do in New York, the museums there. Um, uh, saw Spider Man in New York. That was the best city to see it. <laughs> what about uh, food? So, Did you? Yeah, food. Yeah, food. Of course. Dollar pizza is that like? A, that you, was my favorite thing. Yeah. Two a.m. Dollar pizza because it doesn't the pizza doesn't matter. It's the hot sauce that you put on it. Mm-hmm, sure. So and just, especially at two oh, a.m. Yeah. Oh. You're meant to be in bed. <laughs> yeah, playing. exactly. It's the best. What was the schedule as a comedian living in New York? Because I hear about people doing six shows a night and mm. five yeah. days a week. Yeah, there's. I th- I think it's better in Melbourne because it's too flooded in New York. What the problem with New York uh, New York comedy at the moment is entry level is impossible. There's ten thousand comedians, and they all want gigs. So the rooms start charging open mic comedians to do a spot. So it's really? five bucks. You want to? Oh, you want to do open mic room? It's five bucks, and the bar is only having us if you buy a drink as well. So it one drink minimum. Wow. So you've spent eleven dollars now plus the, you know, tip to the bar person to go do a spot with, um, for like three minutes with all these other open mic comics who are on their phones who aren't listening or are walking out like Mm. and back. So terrible if you just want to, um, do work out new material. Cause I use open mics in Melbourne to work new material out, Mm. but I think in New York is, it's almost like as soon as you don't need to do them, you don't do them anymore. Mm. You get in with a club. So in Australia, we don't have enough clubs to just play at clubs every single night. So I'll do the Comics Lounge for a week. That's great. But then the next week I'll do some bar shows and that's great. And then the next week I'll do some open mics to work on new material. Mm. Then I'll do festivals. So I think just, yeah, New York um, is good if you're in with a club and you can do that club regularly. So it's, yeah, you need to be of a certain caliber yeah already, you need to be passed is... they call it being passed okay, yeah, at yeah, a club yeah, yeah. so i got passed a broadway comedy so i could go and do broadway you know nearly every night of the week what happens when you get passed what is there ceremony is there <laughs> yeah. uh you stop lose, charging yeah. you 11 bucks it's yeah, two dollars exactly. 50 yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh yeah you just uh no you feel like you're now um Worthy. <laughs> no, not even. Now you're competing with all the other dudes who have passed, you know. Mm. So they turn yeah. your mic on. Yeah. yeah. And so what's that like? Is it actually so that's a term that's used? Yeah. How do you know? Bigger in America, don't, we don't really use it. And so what's the like? How do you know, how do you know that you've been passed? So you've been passed? What does passed. that mean? Like yeah. you've, I got you've pa- passed they'll the They'll say something like, I got passed at the store, meaning they will give me regular gigs now. Okay. Because it's open mic until you're passed and now you get regular gigs. Mm-hmm. And then they you, you get paid for the regular gigs or no? <laughs> okay, so it's still – like the yeah. dudes in LA at the comedy store, the big names, I don't, they get they, any paid? Mm, I don't think so. If they are, it's something tokenistic like 25 bucks or something like that. But then they're – I mean, you hear classic Joe Rogan goes to the store. It's like – Yeah, but they're going to work out material. So, yeah, yeah. If, so you're, if you've got a profile and you're going to go on tour and charge people 30 bucks a ticket – you better have good material, right? Yeah. And it better be stuff they haven't heard before. So to do that, you go to the clubs or you go to open mics or you go to bar shows mm. and you work out material. So this is this month for me is like big time trying to get material, you know, worked out. Um, so I've got like a list of all this new material, all these premises I want to try. I was thinking I was just going to run, you know, spend this hour because that's all I'm doing in January, working on material. I thought, oh, I'll come and I'll just work my show out on, on the yeah, show. You can do on that. The show? Okay. Yeah, let's start. <laughs> Joke yeah, one. Yeah, Is that how it works? Yeah, exactly. right, I'll show you my list. I'll okay, go. Okay, yeah. He's so in my phone. The problem with this is, is... Is that a Pixel or what is that? This is a Samsung, Samsung Galaxy, Galaxy okay. S10. I am not sponsored by them. But Samsung, you're out there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. best phone for comedy. <laughs> actually, it's actually, that's kind of true because you can have, uh, when you record your sets, you can, do, you can go to record, um, uh, record to text. 
So you oh, can record yeah. your set and then have your set. On Someone set. was telling us about this yeah. with the phone. This and he was saying the great thing is like if a best. bird makes a noise, it will then like tag at bird. What? Mm. I didn't know really <laughs> yeah. that's, yeah. Like, that's like the Google yeah. one. Not on sure how Android. many birds are at. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe it tags at heckler. Oh, yeah. But what about <laughs>, laughs? Could it tag if there's laughs? A-hole. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be good. La- that'd, that'd be so Yeah, good. it's just like. I, well, you know what would be amazing if it actually like measured the laughs on how on yeah. a scale of one to ten. Oh, that's mm. a good idea. So then you could cut all the jokes that are below five. Yes. Yeah, what good. about the idea of having like a, I mean, this is probably a horrendous idea, The an app. If everyone's going to be on their phone anyway, mm. just sort of like you see it in like um, the, uh, what are those groups called? Where it's like people are reviewing stuff, but you, they could press a button if it's funny or not. Oh, um, uh, yes. focus, test, group. focus yeah, groups yeah. and test groups. Yeah. 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 That could be fun. And yeah. so what app are you using there? This is just uh, the notes, the keep, keep notes. Okay. Google keep. Yeah. Google so keep. A bunch of I think I there. accidentally deleted something. All your jokes. <laughs> Start again. Oh no. Anyway, it's fine. Um, so yeah, my new stand up set. Uh, first premise is I love my girlfriend. So that's oh, not getting any laughs. People are like, all right, whatever, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Um, is this your gratitude list? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pee the bed. Um, the there bed. you go. Manly, super boyfriend, babysitter, uh, meet girlfriend's dad, dip. Yeah, that's like the tobacco they put in the, their mouth in the South. Okay, my girlfriend's yeah. from Kentucky. Um, the word well. Playing the game Rook, it's a card game, texting her dad. So that's like a new set. That's just the set list of material I need to try. And last night I did uh, the babysitter one was um, I'm worried about having kids because of money. Mm-hmm. And like, Amen. Yeah. It's a, it's a true worry. Yeah, it's a, well, yeah, it's a real worry. So uh, apparently like babysitters can be 30 bucks an hour. Yeah, man. So if you are like, it's at three, six, nine, twelve, so 120 bucks for four hours. But what I figured, right, mm. there are some return flights uh, to Adelaide for 90 bucks. <laughs> so if you drop your kid off to the airport, put them on the flight, go out, have your night, pick them up at the airport four hours later, you've saved some sweet cash. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea, <laughs> well, but it has to be returned. <laughs> Is it return? Return. Well, oh, they do wow. offer yeah. like a yeah. service to sort of look, it depends on the age, look after the kid. <laughs> picked about the, picked that. Well, they, I thought <laughs> they were just going to add like. Yeah, well, I was just no, like, no, if return. you're getting to add I like. I said return. Yeah, okay, so need return. All right. Well, there you go. Like That's that. some good feedback on the yeah. joke. I need it's to go. Return. return. So you're getting there and back. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like the important Am I part of it. Do it. So you get there and back for all you Joshes in the crowd. <laughs> yeah. We're going to nitpick or this Because yeah, there's yeah. something else. It's like you could say, oh, you know, you can get a flight to Adelaide, you know, 90 bucks or whatever. So it's sort of. And then the kids in Adelaide, so you don't have to worry about them anymore. <laughs> yeah, you can whack them on the Frankston line, two-hour return trip. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's, pretty, that's a good that's idea. That's really good. What yeah, that four, what's that, 450? Do you no, know, it's, yeah. probably, it's probably... Do you know how many PSOs? Zone two. Maybe you talk about the PSOs. <laughs> like there's PSOs at Dandy State. Like I've, yeah, I've yeah. worked out packing them line. It's getting too nuanced. See, I had too many layers. <laughs> and so this is a list that you've got, right? So how much do you go into the joke before you go up on stage and give it a, give it a crack? Uh, it'll just be a premise. So I'll write down a bunch of premises okay. uh, throughout, you know, my life. Sometimes I'll wake up in the, in the morning. morning. By the way, what is she drinking? That is my girlfriend. She's, I think she drinks coconut water on my phone. Um, uh, the background. I thought it was a milkshake. It's pretty so, embarrassing. So you got the dot points and then premises, which yeah. So a, premi- so a premise, um, like for example, I'm just trying to find something that would be. <laughs> <laughs> so many of them are the bad. Josh won't pick apart. No, so many of them no, are but bad. One of, can you lean into a bad one? What's your least favourite joke? Um, okay, this is my least favourite premise at the moment. Yeah. Old people don't go to therapy. My generation goes to therapy for everything. Like I stubbed the toe, I need three weeks to, mm-hmm. you know, come yeah. to terms with myself. Trauma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but old people don't go because uh, they were like, you know, oh, when I was young, uh, we never had the therapist. We just pushed our feelings down until we lashed out at the barista for not making the coffee hot enough. <laughs> like that's, and then, uh, yeah. So anyway, that's just the premise of the, like older people that never went to therapy. They're yeah. like, no, we just got on with it. Just got yeah, angry. Yeah. So that's that's a premise that I don't think is funny enough yet. Yeah. I haven't put it on stage yet because I just don't think the idea is strong enough. But there's something there. I'll just write something like that down. Yeah, and yeah, if yeah. I think it's good enough, I'll put it on stage. And if it yeah. gets a laugh, I'll keep working on it. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to work on a joke too long. Like just say I spend a day working on one premise like that. I get on stage and no one thinks the premise is funny. Well, yeah, now I've yeah. wasted a day on a joke that I'm not even going to do anymore. So yeah. premise first. Premise first, have maybe one line, 
try it out on stage. If that gets good traction, mm. then I'll expand mm. on it. Shit yourself. Is that a good premise to start with? Shitting yourself. Shitting yourself. Yeah, it can be. I know some comics who have some good gear on that. Yeah. Is it a com- like I know Trop Fest was it was always frowned upon because mm. Trop Fest films always had, there was always one film that had like p- poo humor. That's really funny. <laughs> is that is that <laughs> is that a thing within stand up? Is it like does everyone have a poo humor joke? Well, I don't know. Well, there's different. I, I guess genres of comedy mm-hmm. in a sense styles. So yeah, I'd say style. So some people are blue. Mm. Um, meaning they're crass and they'll do that sort of humour. I don't know, but, you know, farts are always funny, embarrassing stories. It depends how it's done. So, for example, like um, uh, Billy Connolly does a bit about having to get a colonoscopy. So he mm. takes the the meds, the uh, mm-hmm. laxatives the yeah. night before, and he just does this amazing bit. He's like, I'm sitting on the couch and I feel rumble and I run the thing and mm. then I'm like... Pfft. Like he's doing all the sounds, so you think, oh, that's base humour because mm-hmm. he's just talking about like diarrhoea and... Yeah. But the real bit is about him worrying about his health. He's like, yes. oh, dude, I might have prostate cancer. Yeah. Oh, man, I might have whatever. So he's... It's actually deriving from fear and he's like, and this is, you know, so now mm. I'm freaked out because i got to get this thing done and now I'm shitting everywhere. Mm. And, you and so know. what's the premise then? So if you were to work out what, what, what are the layers of a joke, do you think? Of that joke? Of, of a joke. In, so there's the premise. So a premise is? What it's about. And, yeah. and so would and that how be? how people could relate to it? Is that what you're trying to do? Is like. It, it, not necessarily. Like I don't, you know, you don't. Um, I, I, th- I think I'm reverse engineering it right now, but I don't think you sit there and construct it, you know, in a, like a technical sense. Mm. You just go, that's an okay idea. I'll do it uh, in front of a crowd and let them decide. So the audience is doing all the work. I'm just yeah. saying the thing that I thought of and then doing what the audience tells me to do. It's like they're, they're, the, they're the gauge. Mm-hmm. So I'll try that. I tried that, you know, the, the babysitter on the plane last night. And people, that got a huge reaction. I didn't think it would get that big a reaction. Mm-hmm. So now I'm like, oh, well, I'm, I will do that. But if it was left up to me, if I had never heard the audience, I might have thought, nah, it's not, I don't know if it's that good an idea. I'll yeah. ditch it. So I always just get an idea, got to put it in front of an audience, and they decide. Mm. So the 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 premise is just what it's you know what the joke's about, mm. and then you got to have you know you got to have punchlines mm. in it. Um, so yeah, you got to get to punchlines as quickly as possible. Premise, is it the absurdity as well? So taking the plane example, mm. wondering if we could layer it. Mm. Like um, yeah, so the absurdity is that it's you would it's cheaper. To put the kid on a plane and fly in the air, yeah, and go back and forth, return, yes. than it is to. But it's also a truism. So truism mm-hmm. is like if it's technically true, mm-hmm. then yeah, it's 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 absurd, but it's also real. So from a layer's point of view, would you potentially say? And you know, once they get there, I've just looked online. They can rent a car for twelve dollars, like. Yeah, um, you could you could do that. That I mean that yeah, if you want to go down that line. I'll give you an example of a routine right now. I'll do, do you want me to do a routine yeah, for yeah, you yeah, that, that has that, yeah. that goes down that absurd. Yeah, yeah. All right. So um uh biggest problem in my life as a millennial sometimes my phone storage is full. And it's always too many f- photos, right? You have like uh, 7,000 photos and you can't delete them all in one go, especially with an Apple phone. You try to delete them, you know, they make you delete them one at a time. You get bored, throw it out, buy another iPhone. And, you know, there's no official response online. You look up, how do I delete all my photos in one go? The Apple doesn't give give a shit. Like you just, you find some 20 minute YouTube video with some eight year old kid who's like, hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. And you're like, just tell me how to delete the photos in one go. And he sends you to some weird website. You've got to download some, some jailbreaking program. You get the program and it's like, do you want to delete all your photos in one go? I'm like, that's exactly what I want to do. They go, well, that's a premium edition. That's $14.99. You're like, oh 
great. So you borrow dad's credit card and you buy the program and then all of a sudden the program's like, this program's not compatible with your operating system. You're like, why did you tell me that after I paid for it? So you go back to the original website, try to get your money back, but there's no, you know, uh, help center. There's no contact form. There's just some address in Russia. So you head to Russia and when you get to Russia, the cab driver Boris picks you up. He's like, want to make some money? You're like, who doesn't want to make money, Boris? So he sets you up in a corner of Moscow selling drugs to the local expats because you speak English and everyone loves an Aussie. And the head of the Russian mafia commissions you go to in the enemy turf and take them out so it frees up some of the, you know, area for you to deal drugs. You don't exactly know what you're doing, but you grab an AK-47 because you feel better with a bit of weight behind you. And you go into the enemy turf and you're seeing John Wick, so you're like, brrr, brrr, and you got blood in your hands that'll never wash off. But the head of Russian mafia is like, you did well, you can marry my daughter. And you don't really buy into that patriarchal bullshit because you're pretty woke, but hey, a promotion's a promotion. So you're at the altar and Katya's <laughs> coming down the aisle. She looks beautiful. You're like, oh my God, I lucked out. So you make love on your wedding night and all of a sudden she's pregnant. Nine months later, you rush to the hospital and she's in labor and she gives birth and it's a baby and it's a boy. And you're like, oh my God, I'm a dad. I'm a first time dad. This is the greatest moment in my life. And you go to take a selfie with a newborn child and you're like, ah, fuck, my storage is full. <laughs> 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 so that's taking it that's to the an absurd. absurd. That's the absurd one. It. Yeah. So right. it starts with observational, mm-hmm. like, and because you're waiting for it to be brought back to the thing, which that's the punchline. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so in that, that's an example of uh, an observation of like, oh, don't you hate it when your storage is full? Mm-hmm. Apple doesn't le- let you delete photos. Mm-mm. People go, oh, so true. That's relatable, but it's not that funny yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yes, I relate, and you might get a laugh. But then where you go from there. So that's a that's an example of going, I'll take it to an absurd place. So I like it in that sense. But some jokes you do, some jokes you don't. Do you like improvisation? Yeah, I do. But I think when people are paying, you know, 30 bucks to see a stand-up, they want to see the best stuff. Mm-hmm. At least that's how I feel. Yeah. But sometimes you go see like Ross Noble and you want to see him mm. go wild. Yeah. Is, um, is, yeah. For commit, so watching the Kevin Hart documentary – Recently, someone said to him, "You're saying jokes, but they're not connect. They're not you. We don't know anything about you. Mm. They're not personal. I mean, so there's the improv, which is sort of bringing in just you're making shit up, mm. and then you've got the personal style approach as a comedian that's mm. very much revealing about yourself. Where do you think you land in terms of how much you bring yourself mm. and honesty? How much does that play a part in your co- comedy?" Yeah, it's a big deal, I think, because I, I've got to run a new show every year. I do a new hour every year. And some years you're just like, I just need to fill the time. <laughs> so you're putting stuff in that's not perfectly you. I had a joke recently that was about an old man trying to use a Dyson hand dryer. And it was getting laughs, but I listened to it back and I'm like, I'm just making fun of an old man. Yeah. And it's <laughs> not, I, that's not me. I'm not like that. Um so I, I've kind of cut the bit, even though it gets good laughs. Because, mm. um, yeah, so. And now, yeah, oh, you also have Dyson as a brand, as a sponsorship, so you can't yeah, mention that anymore. Yeah, exactly. Well. No, that's, that's got to go. Uh, well, I mean, they actually come off well. I say I was using the Dyson hand dryer the other day at a public bathroom. I didn't even use the bathroom. I was just there for the dryer. <laughs> the so yeah. that, that's like, that's a good, that's a good setup. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. then it goes into like an old man didn't know how to do, I don't know how to do it. I can't put it. Oh, help me young man. And, uh, you know, anyway, so it, it's just, it's not a great, it's I don't, not you. it's not me. I don't like it. And so that's going, but then some jokes like the one I just told you, I really like that because I enjoy flights of fancy and, you know, I'm a millennial, so I got a lot, you know, I, I worry about tech. I know a lot about it. Like even the references yeah. throughout about the kid on YouTube, like and subscribe. That's yeah. something that we get, yeah. but maybe slightly older generation don't know the catchphrase. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Yeah, the well, John Wick reference I liked. Yeah, John Wick reference I mean, and that's, that sort Wick. of stuff. So that's well, it's also the absurdity that just he kills everybody. Like he's just... Is just fucking shooting and killing yeah. everyone. Yeah, yeah, Which exactly. Is, yeah. You've like, seen John Wick, so you know what to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So th- th- saying those things reflects who I am and 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 they will get bigger laughs and and because people go, yes, I feel like I, I, I'm learning mm. about him. But if I go out and go, aren't old people idiots with technology, it might they might get laughs, but, mm. th- but I think afterwards it w- would leave a bad taste in people's mouth and go, oh, you know, that's not you know, whatever. Mm. Like, yeah. In terms of, so we did Eps 500 live show 
first live show we've done of that, you know that scale. Mm. Um, had about eighty people in the room, and we got a lot of laughs. We're not comedians, but I think there's there's something about a live audience that sort of gets you on your seat. Mm. Do you think? Do you think that's a thing? Is it like the live thing is not like say if we were listening to a comedy set without a laugh track behind it. So you're listening to it raw as you're in the audience, but no one else is there but you and the earbuds. Yeah. Is uh, it? Do you think it's still as funny as it is live? I don't know scale, but it's certainly like the psychology of it is like social proof. Mm. And like you hear people laughing, you're more likely to think it's funny. But people can pick up on it if it's fake. Like can't, people hate canned laughter because mm. they're like, Stop trying to trick me into liking it. It's not funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if it feels legit and it feels organic and real, then, yeah, you. It, I think it increases your enjoyment of a thing. But it also changes your timing. So I think you guys say you're not comics, but you're funny guys, but also you're good at listening. And so when you two get in front of a crowd, you you will – listen to the audience and respond and like that's that's really what all a comedian is mm. doing they're saying something and listening and going oh okay i'm going to keep doing that yeah. um so i think if you've got that basic skill of listening because you can see actors sometimes are bad at, uh, at comedy um certainly initially because they're not used to listening to a crowd like that they're used to being focused on you know their script and what they're saying and locking in with one person mm -hmm. and Maybe responding to that one person, um, but with a crowd, it can be it can be different. Maybe maybe TV actors. I think um, play actors are different. Theater actors are different. But uh, yeah, so I would say the the laughter helps you, and I think listening to it. If you're listening to the podcast with the laughter, I think it's um, yeah definitely more enjoyable to feel like you know things are getting big laughs. Mm. Uh, yeah. Last time you were uh, on the show, I th did you mention it on the show, or Maybe. was it, or was it outside? You you talked about the uh, key person of influence, which your sister got you. Yeah, my sister got me. So I thought, oh, guys, start of the year, let's you know give our our businesses a kickstart. Yeah, top five things to do. Amazon dot com best selling. That's book. probably propaganda. But it's like it looks like it's a gold badge. Oh, mate. Yeah, so it looks must. real. Mm. <laughs> what else does it say? It's the revised edition. Uh -huh. uh, it's the five-step method to become one of the most highly valued and highly paid people in your industry. And look at this, right? right? You got all these red people, mm -hmm. but you want to be the blue guy. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, I want to be that blue guy. How do I be the blue and guy? So the blue guy is on the top of the world, yeah. and he's doing some form of salute. And every all the red guys look sad. Yeah, and they got their arms crossed yeah, or upset. on their hips. Yeah, they're not doing great. <laughs> so how to be a blue guy? Um, I love it. So I wanted to. Um, have you read it back to front? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to implement some things now in January with you guys, mm. and then come on the show again if I'm welcome. Uh, <laughs> well, if you're a blue guy, you bloody are. <laughs> you can be a part of the blue crew. Blue, blue yeah, the blue crew. The blue crew. Uh, maybe like a blue man group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I want to see if you guys implement them because I know you guys care about this stuff. Yeah, so yeah. I thought, yeah. yeah. This, uh, have, you read, have you read it? So I've got it on my bedside table. So it's as good as red. Yeah. It's, it's as, as good, good as, as red. red. So definitely People some think of, you've read it when they yeah, come around. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, it's a lie. I don't have a bedside table. It's on the floor. But the um, <laughs> next to my bed, which hmm. is neat. We need bedside tables. Though. But interestingly, your revised one, bit thicker than mine. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah there you go. Well, I get the real info. You yeah, get, you've got the updated You get the outdated shit. stuff. Get to be a blue guy, but quicker than you will. Yeah. All right, I'll read you this bit, all right? Yeah. We're living in a very different world today than we were just a decade ago. So true. It's so true. So what? true of every- That's a truism. Other, that's like, such 2010, a truism. 2010, yeah. Uh, we're at the beginning of a whole new era. We are no longer in the industrial age. We are in a new economy that's digital, global, intangible, more meaningful and very entrepreneurial. Everything has changed and so must you. Hashtag Josh. like and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, uh, He's got illustrations. Oh, yeah, man. You, you being an accountant, <laughs> what the, the man yells at the other man. I think it's a boy yelling at a man. I don't understand the... Yeah. You know, uh, looking that's good the going age, do you think? I know an accountant. He is a great accountant. However, he's not happy and I know why. When he was 18 years old, fresh out of high school, he became an accountant. I'm sure this is all about. <laughs> Today, he's frustrated. I think what what the 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 best stuff in this is um, 
uh, the difference between key people of influence are vital people, not functional people. People who are, who are performing a vital role see themselves as aligned to the result rather than the process. So this is talking about like, are you replaceable in a job? Mm -hmm. So like if, mm -hmm. if you're an accountant or whatever, or you're working in a company, you're doing um, like camera work in a mm -hmm. company or something like that, can, can you be replaced um, the next day? Like, yeah, we can get another dude to, we can get another camera operator. But if you're like the engine behind it, you know, the ideas, like you come up with, you're coming up with ideas, you're yeah. devising strategy, you're driving uh, a, a, a company and, and where it's going, so you you're not replaceable. Do you think there's a difference between thinking you're irreplaceable mm -hmm. and actually be irreplaceable? Because I've left roles and said, these fuckers aren't going to find someone as good as me. Like yeah. that's well, me almost going. They, well, no, but that's is quality. It, it turns out on like what what is the your function. So mm -hmm. if your function is like yeah, like you know editing or whatever, yeah. like they might not find someone as good an editor as you mm. or as fast as you. So mm -hmm. that you know their their production may drop, but uh, they'll you know they'll find someone. Mm -hmm. You know the quality may drop, but in terms of like. If you're creating new and interesting ways to uh, edit for the brand that are, you know, going to make the brand stand out and get more attention and you're an ideas man behind that, well, then you're not mm. replaceable in terms of your personality and what you bring to that specific mm. innovation. You almost need to be like multidimensional. Like you need to steal from a bunch of different areas, yeah. right? Um, go on. The other, no, keep, keep talking. The, 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 other interesting, the, the, un, the, the other interesting thing for the accountant, they've still got six months before they have to wait for their New Year's resolutions. They've got time. <laughs> Happy New Year, July 1. We've got some exercises in the book. What sort of exercises? Who do you know who shows up as a functional person to their job? Functional. What yeah. is the functional meaning again? They just they just do the job. They just do the job the as required. They're a cog. They just, yeah. They're in and it yeah. turns. Yep. Who do I know? I think a lot of people do. Yeah. Mm. I mean, stop looking at Mr. 97, Josh. <laughs> that wasn't, that wasn't, that was, no, he's definitely not a cog. He's yeah. the opposite of a cog. Or he's, he's at a least, flog. You know, <laughs> no, he's two cogs at once, which is very hard to do. Yeah. No, I think he's he's a proprietary cog. Right. Only works in certain machines. Right. That's but he works right. in our machine? Yeah. The thing is, like... Are we saying, I you come on work, here to save you. This you book is for you. You won't work in other machines Get is out. what yeah, Josh is yeah, saying. I'm saying. Like, we're like Sony. Yeah. It's the the battery works with, uh, with us. <laughs> Canon, <laughs> or, yeah, exactly. or you're the abusive oh, partner no. that's telling I, the uh, the woman that you, you, be you won't find anyone else. Yeah, <laughs> I've come and I've blown up the production house. Yeah, we go. No. <laughs> Who do you know who is currently a vital person where their ideas steer the business? No, that's and, actually 97. Yeah, <laughs> right. In all seriousness, um, what are some of the differences you notice between them? <sighs> so yeah, we need an so example the cog, of two yeah, different so the cog, people. Okay, the cog in the machine versus the vital. So the vital person will do shit that's not their job. Yeah, yeah, totally. Because the, if you just do the job, mm. that is uh, jobs that are normally created are uh, functional. Like mm. If you're just doing your job description, that is a functional description. Whereas being vital is like 97, like when he does the, the show notes and stuff, functional doing like he did a tour of the studio that we filmed. Mm -hmm. He was on camera, his personality being in it. Yeah. Or what is what what personality is there? Vital. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well that's true. Well that's probably true of like um not to bring up another podcast show, but like oh, on yeah. like Joe Rogan, mm -hmm. whatever, he's got Jamie in the, the booth doing mm -hmm. all that stuff and yeah. he can have a producer and interchangeable. But the fact that Jamie has become a personality and an icon is mm -hmm. more vital because he's now bigger than, you know. Just um, the job. Bigger than if the you job. Just, yeah, if it was just a job description, you, you need to be able to turn mm -hmm. on the live streaming. Mm -hmm. You need to like mm -hmm. Google. That yeah. stuff is like yeah. replaceable. The yeah. vital stuff is being the being re a reliable yeah. you know, source for people because when Joe Rogan says Jamie, can you bring that up? Mm -hmm. The audience trusts. He's not going to go on Bing. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, a radio anchor. Mm -hmm. We've had have we had both both of these people on our show? Um, oh no, no, we haven't. Daniel Dan Gorn Gondi. Mm -hmm. Gondi. Yeah. So Dan was an anchor on, yeah. on Nova. Yeah, got replaced by Dan Anstey. Oh, that's but right. Yeah, yeah. Literally, I I know them both, and I. Started listening, and then one week I hear another one. They're saying Dan. I'm like, 
I've just fucking replaced a dam with a dam and they sound very similar. <laughs> Literally, how Cause insulting. Because they, they were playing functional roles. But now they're not. They're both killing it. Doing yeah, they're like both the, doing their own show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They read the book, mate. Yeah. That's but what that's happened. what you can be replaced by another Dan in, the, yeah. in an anchor role. Mm-hmm. Don't right. be a Dan. <laughs> Any uh, other bits? Today expects you to be trained. It expects you to educate yourself constantly and bring something new to the table. Mm-hmm. So that's probably another example. Yeah. Well, Mr. 97's uh, words of the year, word of the year. Yeah. Lean. Well, there are two of them, but yeah. Lean in. It's all about leaning in for him. Lean so I think in. That, that plays into that education and sort of learning. and Yeah, immersing yourself in what you're what you're doing and mm-hmm. yeah more trying new shit yeah all right so i wonder where the key um okay key person of influence method um big graph it's a nice big graph oh man i should have done more highlight i did like two highlighting things um look step good. one okay look good is impressive a key person of influence oh here we go yeah okay, okay yeah go for it uh, number padding, one, pitch. Your perfect pitch is so much more than you think. The truth is what uh, a perfect pitch. Uh, uh, with a perfect pitch, you will be swamped with opportunities. So this chapter is about how do you pitch your idea, your business, your mm-hmm. goals yeah. to someone really clearly? Because I find this all the time with startups. Yeah. When you uh, say, oh, so what's your startup? Like, oh, you know, we're like consulting innovations, you know, problem solving, whatever. And like, I don't know what you mm-hmm. do. There's so many companies. Agile. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, Tinder I, meets yeah. Airbnb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I guess that's more specific. Yeah. So You're how do we do? Because we're not nature. good at the we're not good at the pitch necessarily. And I, and I, so if we're going to use the startup example, you've got the fluffy startup, but then I also think you've got the the real like fucking ability, like Jules Lund mm-hmm. with Tribe to just. It's a marketplace. Blah, you know, he just nails the pitch, right? Yeah. But and then it can inspire people and people go, I know what you're talking about. Let me connect with that. Which I think a lot of these new startups, their business models are so specific and have had to be thought mm-hmm. out with that pitch. And then the nuance of um, freelancing model, like I do a bit of this, do a bit of that. Like people still trying to find their feet of mm. what I'm actually doing, what service am I providing, what value am I, am I bringing. When you're working that out, it's hard to – have the pitch down pat. Right. Don't you think? Like when you're like. Well, it's, yeah, I guess so. I guess if it's not clear in your head and it's flexible and it's too movable, then I guess you want how you achieve that pitch to be flexible, but you don't want the pitch to be flexible. So Does you, that make sense? So it's knowing your audience. Who are you speaking to at the, mm-hmm. yeah. that moment? What do they even give a shit about? Which takes a level of sort of being in the moment to work yeah. out. Okay. Simon, you're a comedian. I, we we make videos. How can we relate? If I'm telling you about what we do as a business or yeah. the show, like which if one do an, we bring up? If you're up? an HR professional, we might say um, at the Daily Talk Show is about serving the future of work. People aren't working in offices now. They're spending more time working from home. Yeah. And there's an opportunity to create something consistent that they can listen to every day Mm. that is beyond the typical commercial radio. Commercial radio is like Mm. a broad audience. It's geo-specific. We're providing uh, something different. Yeah, we're keeping you company during your work day, which is not Mm. normal anymore. Yeah. Well, it's relevant not just startups, relevant to music brands and Mm. to to things like that. So like a a startup example is my cousin has one called Travelling Tradies and – for a while, the pitch was a little bit like it was difficult to nail down. But now what it is is um, he uh, provides Australian tradies with holiday experiences uh, in developing countries who need tradies to help their local communities. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. And so it took him a while to, I hope I did it justice, to, 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 to nail that down. But when he, and he, if he can pitch that to everyone, when people go, what do you do? And he can say that, oh, I help developing countries get things fixed in their communities by sending Australian tradies over for holidays. Mm-hmm. It's great. He did that on the Today Show and he, he does that in, you know, pitch meetings, things like that. People go, oh, I get it. I know yeah. what they, oh, helping yeah. developing countries, amazing giving tradies, you know, a holiday is, you know, important too because mental health in in, mm. in um, that industry is really important. So he did has done really well now to, to lock that down. And now how he goes about it, whether it's through an app 
that has changed. Like, oh, the website, we've got to get the website right. Oh, we're going to do it manually. No, that's too much. Okay, we'll do it through an app. Like, so how he gets to there will mm. be flexible. But the 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 core pitch has been pretty um, well locked down now. So, uh, Josh, when you left yesterday, I, I kept watching um, Jason – Calacanis or something? The, oh, Jason Calacanis. Yeah, so he's got This Week in Startup, a podcast he's had for like 12, 12 or 14 yeah, years. It's a video something. show right. though. If you're going to see it, check mm-hmm. it out on YouTube because you, you see. So there was like the one I was watching was a bunch of Aussies and he's like he's sitting down at his desk and they're standing up. So he's he's got them standing up and he's sitting there and he's like, all right, you've got a minute and a half, you get two minutes or whatever it is. Pitch. Now pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then he's so brutal after he's like, look, your pitch was terrible mm. but you – you're great. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just like it's a Gordon Ramsay going on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so you saw, I saw like someone cramming in information into mm. the pitch. There was like a lot in it. Yeah, but not much connecting to what the idea is or what yeah. the thing is. Well, I reckon we need to do a better job of it. I was thinking 100%. about like so. 100%. For instance, from a video point of view, you could say, uh, "Are we do video production for all different types of brands?" What Jason Calacana says is use an actual real world example. Yeah. So for us, the real world example would be uh, uh, we worked with a company called Land Build. Uh, they were working on a site in Geelong to rebuild the uh, beach house, which was a um, iconic um, area in Geelong where there's going to be a cafe and all that sort of thing. And we filmed the whole process from start to finish mm. with them dealing with the council, right. speaking with the uh, the the client that is putting the whole cafe together, mm. and by the end of it, they ended up with a video that they can show to other potential clients. With this is what we do. This is how we make it. I mm. did a shit job. No, I know. But the, so then the the second attempt. Mm. How do you lead with the problem? Yeah. So um, construct. We, we're in video production. Mm-hmm. Construction companies. Mm-hmm. Uh, creating these amazing buildings and structures and people see the final product but they don't see the journey along the way, the Mm. hard work that was put in. Mm. We help land build capture over four months the development of one of their greatest developments that they've been a part of, Mm. blah, 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 blah. Or maybe even the final product or something around trust. Maybe you say we help people tell their stories of um, triumph. Well, the thing is, or success but, but or for work. a lot of people, it doesn't necessarily explain the specific, mm. like I guess there's something in the specificity of it where you say like one of the things with uh, builders is it's really a process of them uh, entering tenders or putting themselves forward for tenders. Yeah, like Tenders uh, are based on trust and pricing. Mm. Pricing is very easy. You can look at a, a spreadsheet. You can see how much something costs. Trust is... Uh, really is something that's less tangible. Right. Um, And so what we do is we help bring that trust element by putting together videos that communicate their history and how they've done it previously. Their processes, their interactions with the client. So you get a tangible sense Mm. of how they go about Mm. uh, development. Right. And we capture that Mm -hmm. and... Yeah, I th- take it, take it over. Yeah, Lock on, on, no. Okay, well, look, I'll, I'll go back to the book and see Great what they pitch. reckon Perfect Pitches are. Here are some <laughs> excerpts from Punky. Perfect Pitches Shit. that changed the world. I have a dream song by Great Martin Luther King. That is such a bad sign in a book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a, a dream that someday this nation will live up to its creed that all men are created equal, right? Um, uh, uh, you must be the change you want to see in the world, Gandhi, and things like that. I, man, this is so tough. They're going but, pretty yeah, high. They're high going level. really high. Um, but uh, I think, oh, man, there was a section where he, he put it really well. When people say, well, what do you do? And you go, oh, I'm a, you know, I'm a builder. Mm-hmm. And you go, oh, okay. Then that sort of label, that's uninspiring. Yeah. But if it's like, um, hey, what do you do? And you go, oh, I make um, senior people's lives, uh, you know, better by... Um, uh, adjusting their house to suit their medical conditions. Mm-hmm. You go, oh, that's yeah, yeah. that's really awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. There, I think that is that specificity that you talk about. So it, it's, it's the problem. It's it's saying how you're solving a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess yeah. so. But yeah, I, I guess I've it's heard, more clear vision. I went to a seminar and it was like reverse engineering. It. So it's like there was some process 
that they went. But it's like, yeah, leading leading with that kind of like you're not even – they don't even know what you do yet. Mm-hmm. They understand the sort of the the value you bring. So like that, yeah, we help. Like a wedding photographer, you know, it's like special moments, mm-hmm. you know, like like entering into the emotion before you've even said the thing. So you should sort of lead the thing. But, I mean, this is not – Human interaction. If we're at, if I'm at a party and someone does that to me, yeah, I'd be like, this guy's like fucking a bit. I, I, but so if you do it in a story, if you wrap it up in a story, you're trying to wrap it up in a story, but you're also trying to be a human. Mm-hmm. Which like, is, yeah. You're not in pitch mode mm-hmm. necessarily when yeah. you're at the pub or at a party. Like, oh, people- here, here's an example, right? Here's doing that, right? So, from to what, right? What do you do? Oh, I have a PR agency. We do work on brand endorsement deals, right? That's the basic Boring. One. Boring. Two, I run a PR agency. We specialize in matching celebrities with product uh, endorsement deals. These deals make money for everyone involved and uh, last for years. We've done deals for big businesses right through to startups. Yeah, I love that. Um, I'm an M&A consultant <coughs> from this. I'm an M&A consultant. I help businesses grow through acquisitions. Two, I specialize in mergers and acquisitions. I help companies to buy out a competitor without using any cash. Many of my clients have doubled their revenue in a single deal. Mm. So yeah, very clear it's, off. Yeah. You understand what, what, what's, what you get in that. Yeah. As a comedian, how do you go about like- How do I do it? Well, no, I mean, there's a part where- Having a like being mates with a lot of people and being the person that people love mm. would contribute highly to you getting jobs. You know, let's say that you're a baseline comedian, you're funny, yeah. people think you're funny, you get laughs, mm. you're also the guy that's loved. Mm. I think that comedian over the nailed cell that has an av- that has the same set, the, the person mm. that's loved, so the person that is about able to. I don't know, nurture relationships. It also depends on if it's corporate. Like if you do, if, if it's a corporate client, hmm. they're probably thinking, is he going to be, is he going to stay within the boundaries? So yeah, it so being appropriate. in the corporate world, it's like, are you clean? Are you going to get me in trouble? Mm-hmm. So the first thing you go, hey, I've done this so many times. I'm not going to get you in trouble. I'm going to get you, um, you know, people applauding and correct, congratulating you for booking, mm-hmm. booking me. Right, so that's like the number one thing because it's always like, you know, a PA who's doing it, or some some companies have like, you know, the um, event organizer or whatever, and they are under the pump. If they book a comedian, that's great because relatively cheap compared to like a dance crew or a band or a big, you know, celebrity, a mm-hmm. illusionist or something like that. Lots of props or whatever. So comedian is like great on budget, um, uh, but. What's the risk factor? Are they going to get complaints? Like, I can't believe the comedian said this sort of stuff. It's so offensive. And that's happened. I've had before corporate gigs, people call me like, mate, I'm well, mate, I'm under the pump. You know, I'd like a couple of years ago, we had a comedian who was a bit misogynistic and like, you know, a lot of backlash and made, you know, my, this, my job rides on this. And I'm like, don't book a comedian then. But, <laughs> but I, I was like, mate, I've got this, right? I am you know, clean and accessible and inoffensive and you're going to have a great time. And so that in the corporate world, yeah, that's, that's mm-hmm. a big value. And so your brand recognition, like if you're on TV and radio a lot, on TV and radio you have to be clean mm-hmm. generally. Yeah. So that's why they probably rely on those sort of people more. So, yeah, brand recognition in that sense, if you've got a clean comedy brand, how well known is that? Um, that's important. But in terms of like... The, the networking side of things, that's important because it's a very, I know it's unregulated in the sense of like being, you know, super funny as a comic doesn't necessarily guarantee you getting spots. Mm. Like you've got to not be a dick to the room bookers or the TV people and you've got to be good to work with. So I know they're, they're a comedian. You know, if I have a choice between two comics, one I know who's pretty funny like we'll do the job, but I can work with them really well. I'll pick that comic over someone who's super incredibly, like brilliantly funny, who I can't, you know, bring into an environment where there's mm-hmm. networking and happening. And that's happened before. I've I've helped comedians who I think are so funny, like the funniest people I've ever seen. They're just so smart and unique and brilliant. And I've given them a gig. They've turned up late. They've offended the bar staff. They've, you How know. How do you offend the bar staff? 
um, by like demanding a free drink because you're a comic rather sure. than asking, oh, hey, man, I'm new tonight. Nice yeah. to meet you. Mm -hmm. I'm Simon. How mm -hmm. you going? Um, how does it work here tonight? Sure. Is there yeah, a yeah, drink yeah. involved? Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Rather than like, I'm a comic. I'm meant to get a free drink. Oh, wow. Yeah, like sure. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that dude might be hilarious on stage, but if you're not, mm. <laughs> if you're not going to play the game of normal society, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So that is a factor for sure. Like some, you know, some level of being likable and accepted mm. um, because then you just won't get opportunities um, in the long run. So there's comics who are way more talented than me and other comics I know, but just are not fun functional. Yeah, yeah. And know, then, I mean, the, there is probably a few of those that slip through and make the mega stardom that then there's and everyone always references is, them, right? Has overridden the mm -hmm. other shit. Yeah, I think they can have like, they can probably mitigate it enough in the beginning, you know, whatever, and just are nice to the people they need to be. Mm -hmm. And then when they get into stardom and they now they've got like, you know, people orbiting them, you know, to then sort of insulate them from having to be a decent person, mm -hmm. you know, or I mean, look at the savagery of uh, Ricky Gervais yeah. at the Golden mm -hmm. Globes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he getting those jokes? Uh, flag or no. run, does he run those paths or he just he does it? He apparently does, but they're like, we're not going to muzzle you. So <laughs> it's, it's really, so it brutal. goes through lawyers. So he, they all go through <laughs> lawyers. Yeah. So he goes, the lawyers just go, yeah, there's nothing libelous in here. That's mm. all they care about. Yeah. The Golden Globes don't want to be sued. Yeah. So they go through lawyers. Is there anything we can be sued for? No. Nah, yeah. Then yeah. do Can them. Apple sue us for mm. uh, relating them to ISIS? Or yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. The, well, no, it was the Chinese sweatshops. Sweat yeah. The sweatshops yeah. and like, then the extrapolation mm. was Apple with their, and ISIS, yeah, and their yeah, streaming yeah. service. If, if ISIS mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. had uh, a streaming service, people would be running to their agents mm -hmm. to get them a deal with ISIS. Yeah, but he's he's in a position enough, like he doesn't need Hollywood in that way. Mm. He doesn't like, care. He makes his shows said. with Netflix. He prays Netflix because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he's employed by them. But like yeah. he doesn't he doesn't mind. He can get his projects up and work with the people he wants to work with yeah. in his group. And then, yeah, he can make fun of those 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 celebs who are in those positions of, of power and things like that. But, yeah, I mean, even those people, though, I mean, everyone's essentially working. Like he, he, on that Golden Globes, Scorsese's work at the table with Al Pacino and Pesci and De Niro, the people he's been working with for, what, 50 years or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then um, Tarantino's at the table with DiCaprio and I think Brad Pitt's, no, and Brad Pitt. So he's worked with those dudes before. Mm. It's just like you find your people and you're good to the people around you and that kind of, and, you know, you work on the projects that you, you, um, you know, want to work with, uh, want to work on. And, yeah, don't do anything to, because I think it comes back to bite you eventually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're if you're alienating people and burning bridges, for sure. Especially now. Mm -hmm. With uh, comedians, you obviously there's a lot of different formats. So there's that corporate stuff, there's the stand-up. Mm. You were doing the Sunday experiment on the hit network. Yeah. Uh, which was sort of like a radio a radio format. Yeah, what, radio gig. I really liked that. Yeah, how did how'd you find that? I liked being on air because mm -hmm. it felt like a performance. Yeah. It was like, oh, this happened with my girlfriend today. Here's a, you know, it's... In, in many ways, it's getting my list of premises that I was looking at earlier, the joke premises, and just getting to, to basically do them with one other person. Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed that um, performance element to it. Live radio is really enjoyable. The stuff around it can be difficult, like the meeting beforehand, stressing out about, you know, the, the show and what to do and what not to mm -hmm. do, and, and then afterwards, you know, feedback and all that sort of stuff. Like the world around it can be very stressful. But, is it good stress or is it unnecessary? Um, I don't want it in my life. Mm -hmm. Can I just turn up and do the performance bit? Uh -huh. And <laughs> yeah. what do you think the answer is? Can you? I think I, think I can. However, I feel like I can be consistently – well, I think someone like Husey, for example, mm -hmm. I think he – certainly prepares, but he's so clear on what he is now. Like he's so consistent. He's consistently funny. His point of view is, is clear that they know what they're getting with him. And so I reckon. But that only happens over time. That happens over a long period of time. Yeah, totally. So to answer the question at this stage, 
they're probably like, oh, are you going to be, you know, brand friendly? Mm -hmm. Are you going to do anything that, you know, uh, upsets a network and whatever? And also I think producers want to have a hand. They want to put their fingerprints on you into some some mm -hmm. degree. Like, oh, I want to have a hand in molding you into a perfect, you know, radio presenter. So what sort of feedback would you get? I didn't read it. <laughs> and do you it think was that, written. That and was kind. And, and, I got the emails. And so, from a them. feedback point of view, it, <laughs> where do you? What is your relationship with? Because I guess from a um, development point of view, feedback, and you're good at feedback in regards to is the audience laughing, listening, right? You are a good listener. Well, if it's for an audience, I think what happens is when you get into other media forms you're trying to please all these different groups. So mm -hmm. first of all, trying to please an audience. Why? So they watch or they listen or they come to a show because they're the lifeblood of what you do. Without an audience, there's nothing. So you step one, you learn how to please an audience. Great. Now you do that. And now marketing gets involved. Well, we've got this sponsor and they don't want you to mention this, 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 mm -hmm. or this. So now you're trying to please an audience with all these caveats. And you're like, okay, well, that's fine. You know, you could probably work it out. A lot of the time you can integrate things and, you know, you could do product placement and whatnot. And I think like Alan DeGeneres is pretty good <laughs> at, at working in something super funny with a brand in and that's fine. That's problem solving. That's using creative thinking anyway. But then you've got like a producer who just has an opinion of like, well, I want it done this way. Mm -hmm. And then that's when you start to get tension. You're like, well, why? Yeah. Because the audience doesn't want this and they don't want that. It's like, how do you know? Yeah. You're not performing to them. Mm -hmm. You're not connecting with them. You don't know. So I've Are had, there good I've had producers and bad producers? Yeah, totally. But some good producers will give you a framework to create in. What does uh, that look like? Um, so, for example, like a, like a late night talk show or something like that. When you, when you want to go on that, they're like, well, it's got to be clean and um, uh, it, we want it to have – you know, three different bits in it so we can edit it for length. Because mm -hmm. if you do one long routine, it makes it super hard for them to edit. So they'll give you something like that and you're like, that's fine. I can do that. I can find three small routines that if you need to cut one of them for time or cut part of it for time, it's not going to ruin the set. I'll keep it clean so you don't get in trouble with the FCC or whatever. Mm -hmm. Fine. When there's... Um, when they look at your set, they go send me a tape and look at your set. They go, yeah, that won't, that won't work for our audience. And you go... What do you mean? I've been doing that bit across America mm -hmm. for, you know, seven years. It does work. I know it works. I've been in there with the crowd, mm -hmm. hearing them laugh. I've got audio recordings of them laughing and them going, no, I just don't think our crowd will get it. I'm like, they will. I know they will because mm -hmm. <laughs> I've done it. I've mm -hmm. done the testing. So when their opinion supersedes your evidence, that's a bad producer mm -hmm. because they don't know but I've, I've got the evidence to prove that, you know, the bit works or the bit is palatable. So when they try to subjectively alter your piece of work, your, your stand-up or whatever the, you know, art form is, that's a problem. When they're doing it based on, you know, legal requirements, like we can't at this time slot swear, fine. Totally fine. Mm -hmm. What about co-hosts? So you've got like the producer side of things and then when you're doing a show, you are co-creating with someone else. So yeah. it's like uh, it's one of those things where it's like you're even you're co-creating, I guess, with an audience as well, If you mm. know, uh, in a lot of ways. But if you've got someone that you're speaking to, mm. their responses, where they go down, that if, if you're thinking – punchlines or a destination for a story. Totally. How and they you, ray roll, yeah. railroad it. Yeah. Well, that's another factor. So that's, you know, that's another, um, I guess there's a bit of trial and error with that. Like, you know, finding the good, you know, uh, someone someone to work with. Like um, Husey and Kate were like the perfect duo. Mm -hmm. I thought, and then Ed Cavalier came on. I'm like, oh, they're perfect as well. And I was like, oh, these people are just <laughs> are all just really good mm -hmm. at listening to each other and giving each other. They're just sort of, you know, um, highly capable people. So, so, what, so if it's universal, if you can sort of, there's some qualities that work well together 
Is it listening? Is that what it is? I think, yeah, I think listening is is important and knowing when to, yeah, listening, but also knowing what to do with that information, like knowing when to come in and knowing when to let someone go. I think that that's important. But I, I don't know a lot about radio because I'm pretty new to it. So I'm enjoying it. But um, yeah, just it, it, I just feel like sometimes a, a lot more layers are piled onto it than need to be there. Mm-hmm. If you, if it's, if it's about, if it's stand up, it's me and the audience. That's all that matters, really. If it's radio, it's you and your co-host. That's all. If you guys are having a good time, mm. um, then, uh, then hopefully the show then will, will do well. And I think that happened with um, uh, Joe and Limo on Gold. So there was this amazing period where, <laughs> so they were, I think, number two or number three or something like that in the ratings and cause they had a producer who would uh, produce, I think a bit, I think there were just so many notes coming. There was, you know, all these, you know, notes coming, but the head of uh, programming decided oh, I'm going to ditch um, uh, Joe and Limo at the end of the year anyway. So I don't care. And the producer got fired. So he's, so the head of program was like, well, I'm not going to hire another producer because I'm ditching them anyway. Mm-hmm. So for six months, they didn't have a producer and the show was so good because they got to do what they wanted mm-hmm. and they didn't have all these intense, you know, notes and pressure from, from a producer. So they became number one in those six months because the show was so good mm-hmm. that all they got to focus on doing was their, their chemistry and making a good show. So it's, it can be in like a, 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 a producer can be suffocating when what they think they're doing is steering. So if you have a good producer that can encourage the and, and affirm and reinforce the good things you're doing and can help you avoid the, you know, shitty things you're doing, then that then that's great. But if they're stifling, then, you know, it's better just not to have one. Mm. So uh, the Melbourne Comedy Festival starts is that March or when does or April? When does the comedy festival start? You should know. Uh, yeah, end of March. Uh-huh. So I'm well. I'm about to go to Perth for Perth Fringe World mm-hmm. and do first uh, week of first two weeks of Feb. Then I'm going to do five weeks in Adelaide. So from Feb to March, and then end of March, I'm going to do Melbourne Comedy Festival, and then after that, I got Sydney Comedy Festival. Uh, right. Back to America. What do you, yeah. Where do you live in these? Like Adelaide, where, where do you stay for five weeks? Uh, I've got a friend in Adelaide that I stay with. Um, I've got a girlfriend in Melbourne that I live with, <laughs> uh, that I stay with. She lets me stay with her. <laughs> <while. That's nice. laughs> Perth, are you doing? Every- Perth, I just got a hotel in Perth for yeah. 10 days. Yeah. Right. Mm. Living mm. hotel life for 10 days. Do you like that life? Do you like? Uh, I prefer living with my girlfriend. I like that. Good I, answer. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Her dad watches the show, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. So in Kentucky, because he, when when we started da- when we started dating, he would look up everything that I've been on online. So uh-huh. he'd seen the doco we made together. Oh, great. great. He'd watch this show because he brought something up at dinner. He's like, "Oh, that's like in that daily talk show you mentioned this." I'm like, "So you know, shout out to all the Kentucky <laughs> viewers." There you go. Um, so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I like traveling and seeing new things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but. After a while, things can get mundane. So, like, for example, I loved going to the UK last year and I went to Ireland and I started in Cork, the south of Ireland, did a gig. Next day, caught a train all the way up to the, to Northern Ireland and did a gig that night in Belfast, and that was awesome. But if I had to do that, say, every six months, I'd be like, ugh, gosh, work. Mm-hmm. So are you going to be tired by the time you get to Melbourne? I'll be fine because in Adelaide I just – really look after myself, mm-hmm. like lots of go to the gym, eat really well, do my shows. Have you go got it bed. all dialed in? Party. Like you know where your gym's going to be, you yep. know the cafes yep. and stuff you're going to go to? Yeah, I know my supermarket, everything. I've done it. Yeah, this will be my 10th year doing festivals. Wow. Yeah, so I've got it down and I don't go party. Like, mm-hmm. in fact, anything, Husey and I will hang out because we don't drink. Yeah. So we'll go hang out and we'll have a nice dinner or something like that and we'll chat a bit, but then we're done. So... When I first started doing festivals, I'd be like, oh, all the, all the partying's happening. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm after 3 a.m., you know, going to, you know, the, the festival clubs and things like that. So I got it down to a, to a science now that the fun stuff for me is, you know, traveling with my girlfriend and 
playing ball games with people and reading about how to build your business yeah, uh, yeah. for you. Pitch um, hard. Pitching hard. Um, our, uh, our mate, uh, Dr. Jason Fox, was talking about Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, love that game. Uh, what's, if we want to get into it, what's the deal? Speak for yourself. Um, you don't want to get into it. Nah, no <laughs> oh, you want to get into it? Um, you can Too buy the thinking. books, buy the player's handbook and the um, a handbook. Dungeon Master's Guide. Yeah. Can I get that on World of Books 97? Can you look it up? I want to get a really nice secondhand one. Yeah. What's it called? The Dungeon Master's Guide and the Player's Handbook. You've got to read those two. Or you could find a Dungeon Master like me. Like I can you do are it. a Dungeon yeah, Master? Yeah, I can do it. But um, I've written scenarios and things like that. Yeah, I really enjoy it. Um, yeah, I've played it a lot actually. But uh, How many times have you been a master? Ah, oh, dozens, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Lots of sessions. So when I traveled, this is one of the things I did when I traveled, I'd go into a town, just say I'm in Brisbane for a week. I'd set up a game of Dungeons and Dragons at the local board game store and people who'd never played before could come and play. So what do you wear? Just my normal clothes. Yeah, it's not that. <laughs> it's just, it's, it, I guess it's like. You can't get dressed up? You can if you want to. Yeah, you can do like whatever you do it however I feel you like want. Like a Dungeons and Dragons master would be dressed up. It's just sto- it's storytelling. It's really it's kind of like improv and storytelling, and so you know the dice determines whether you're successful at something. So um, do you know much about it at all? Nothing. No. Okay, so you create a character um, sure. based on the Lord of the Rings world, basically. So I have to watch Lord of the Rings. I haven't watched it yet. Um, but it's that world. You know, like dwarves and elves and, sure. and wizards and warriors and paladins and things like so that. So I need to know if I was, I guess the manual, the handbook, how much is the handbook going for? 46 bucks on World of Books mm-hmm. or Amazon for 32. Really? World of Books? What are you guys doing? Because <laughs> plus 10% too, hey? I'd go World of Books for sure. What, just because of the... Joking. <laughs> dumb, dumb move. <laughs> dumb move. <laughs> no, but 97 was pointing out because World of Books is se- second-hand books that you mm-hmm. can buy online. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You get second-hand we'll more exp- you can get You can get book. used on Amazon for 30 bucks. Oh, what about the new ones? I guess we don't... Brand, many, brand new is 32. How many pages? Is the book? Yes. 200 and something. No, the Amazon. They're in such thing. good condition because people read them and thought, I'm not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just imagining like really, I want to get one that's got some history to it. Yeah, right. So it's I, some lore. Yeah. Yeah, so I bought um, the Judd Apatow book, Sick in the Head, uh, on mm. World of Books, and mm. it was a um, like a pre-release mm. copy. Mm. They're just like, obviously it, it made its way around. It was cool. So it's like a real thick version because it's like so, got heaps of like padding yeah. and stuff. I don't know if D&D is your game. So the board game world is so huge. There's so many wonderful mm-hmm. titles. Why isn't done? Why? I think a strategy game you'd like. Have you played Pandemic? Is that the the one with the rice? Oh, sorry, the the, the hay? No, Pandemic. No, that's, um, uh, oh, now I've drawn a blank. Um, Catan, I think. Catan. So yeah, yeah. Of Catan. I think Pandemic potentially. Pandemic is a strategy game that's cooperative. So you're all on the same team and mm-hmm. then a disease breaks out around the world or diseases break out around the world and you've got to go around curing the diseases. So you're working together. So he's like, all right, dude, if you go to Hong Kong, then I'm going to go to Los Angeles and I'll cure a thing there. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. I think you'd like that because I think you are you like st- strategy and, uh-huh. and discussion you and cooper- that or no cooperation. <laughs> you can do yeah, you can dress. You have to dress up yeah. as, as a naughty elf. nurse. Naughty, naughty, nurse. Naughty, <laughs> naughty nurse. Naughty nurse. I'll do that. So yeah. the D- back on the D&D thing, so we pick either like a dwarf, a wizard. A fucking- yeah, and you give it a name. Like last time I played, I created a dwarf character that sounds like my nonna. Yeah, so it's like, you know, they're like, all right, the dragon's coming. What do you do? I'm like, I make the pizza. I make a pizza for everyone. So we have a full stomach before we go into battle. Is there a like, lot of etiquette? Know. Like, can you get real annoying with day and day? Yeah, oh, there's a I lot can of imagine there's that. etiquette for sure. Yeah. What's some of the etiquette? The etiquette is uh, not talking over people, letting people play their turn out. Because if, you know, you're a character, have you seen Lord of the Rings? Yes. Yeah. So just say you're playing an elf like Legolas or whatever, you're an archer. And there's, you know, I don't know, there's a creature that you, you want to kill, like a, a vampire or whatever. Um, and, and so would I need to know that a dwarf can kill a vampire? Yeah. Like sure, surely in the game, like, yeah, I guess the dungeon master, like if a vampire is there, or maybe it's just like a... Um, uh, 
uh, a werewolf or whatever it is. So and a dwarf like, you is need not to know... killing a werewolf. No, you could be with an arrow. Yeah, if you got silver arrows, you know what I mean. Like there's law. And how do there's you get law silver with arrows? It. Well, then you got to go on an adventure to work it out. So and you got so to speak you to say... characters in the game. So you're in a bar, all right? You're in a you're in the tavern. You're you're uh, what creature do you want to be? Happy with an elf archer? I'm happy with an elf. I want to be a werewolf. You want to be a werewolf character? Werewolf. You can be a werewolf character. Okay. So what are you in your human form? Um, a human form? What is that? Yeah, uh, so are you, you got a hum, are you in human form? Are you just like a, a man, a guy? During the day, you were like, hey. Why do I need that? Because I, I you think, become a werewolf at night. That's, yeah, werewolves aren't just werewolves all day. Mm. Yeah, yeah exactly. can't be a wolf all day. No, no. Human. Yeah, I, let's give you, Wait, no, so sorry, we can okay. give you a race. So you can be a human, you can be a dwarf, you can be an elf. To be fair, you dwarfs can be, do an elf. are human. Elf's funny. Dwarfs aren't, aren't you, human yeah, in yeah, D&D. Both elves. Oh, in D&D. Okay, yeah, yeah. So. You can be can we a both gnome. Be elves? You can both be elves. A gnome? Yeah. So a gnome's gnome. cool. But yeah, then you turn into annoying. You can be turn a, into a halfling, savage. which is a hobbit. Can he be so. Gandalf, just a wizard? Yeah, you could be a human wizard. Okay. No, I know what I'll do. Can okay. I be a wizard and then a werewolf at night? <laughs> yeah, you can be a werewolf when it's a full moon. Right. Mm. And so you would, so anyone could declare a full moon? Uh, no, I'm the dungeon master. So I would determine what's happening in the world. I Set create the, the world. So I'm like the, yeah, so I'm like the computer. I'm the computer game yeah, and I dictate. So you. Um, you so what am I? So I'm a werewolf at night and a wizard during the day. Cool. Okay. So you're a wizard human. Mm -hmm. All right. And we've discussed beforehand that you want to be, a, you know, you're a werewolf or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you get to decide your backstory. Are you looking for a cure? Are you happy to be a werewolf? So is this or my you're in a path of vengeance? Not yet. I just, this is, this is. Before the game, you create your character and your mm. motivation for the character. So you're a wizard who has a backstory that you they get to decide. Uh, when I was a kid, I was bitten by a werewolf, mm -hmm. so I became a wizard so that one day I could maybe be able to use magic to cure myself. And so how long do we each have to describe that story? As long as you want. We have a session that could go like five hours or whatever, you know, oh. like however <laughs> long a session is. And so is there etiquette around length? Mm. I mean, don't take the piss, but just have fun. Sev's longest D and D game ever. Look yeah. that up. Look that yeah. up. Yeah. So like longest. <laughs> well, it takes. Running. It takes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do like multiple session. sessions because you level up. Your characters level up. So you're an archer. You're a human archer. Um, maybe you know whatever you decide your backstory is. Like maybe you're, you know, evil and you just want heaps of money. Mm. Like you're on adventures to get money, or maybe you're. Um, you know, wife's been captured and trying to get it back or whatever mm -hmm. it is, you come up with your backstory. I'm so, angry at the world. You might find me trying to get donuts, just getting angry. Great. Perfect. So uh, hangry on the hunt I'm for hungry, donuts. Yeah. And so I'm um, only a werewolf when it's... Um, when the when moon's up. When the moon's up. Yes. And also uh, when I'm a werewolf, I, um, I become very good at get, using guns. Right. Sniper. Well, there's no gu the there, there's no guns in in the game I'm creating. There could be. So I think so. Some, so some you would guns. would I be able to I say that, or you would? Say we would discuss beforehand. So there's character creation is step one. <laughs> then we start the game. You need to watch Lord of the Rings, Josh. Yeah, and do yeah. you know there what a werewolf guns. is? It's a big dog. Mm. It's a big wolf. Yeah, yeah. but like I can't a, use guns. But a wild one. You can't use guns. But it's all magic. You're better off with Gandalf. Yeah, what, is so, Gandalf? Isn't he from Harry Potter? No, no, he's from. <laughs> Gandalf is from Lord of the Rings. Who's the big bearded guy in Harry Potter? The oh, yeah. Dumbledore. 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 Different actor. I can't as well. be him though. Yeah. So okay, you're a wizard, and you've got this thing. You're a werewolf, and we're in a tavern. So how it's did he? Afternoon. How did Tommy get to pick about the donuts? He just gets to do that. It's a, and so it's, I bring up the gun thing. Though, he gave you the opportunity. Well, in the wor in this current world, we can have guns. We can have muskets if we want. But I would play it in terms of it's like. A Lord of the Rings world where it's, uh, you know, wizards and uh, swords and axes and mm -hmm. archers and things like that. So, it's, so a medi ourselves... it's a medieval world. Okay, sure. Have you seen um, Game, of, uh, uh, Game of Thrones? I don't watch anything. No, I haven't. I haven't seen Game of Thrones. So no. this world <laughs> that D&D &D is set in is set in these medieval fantasy worlds. So they tend not to have guns. Could I, okay. Could I say that I've got the hardest armour in the world? No. You have to buy armor. So you might start the game with a certain amount of money, gold, or certain, um, like it's, it, you're all level one characters to begin with. Okay. 
So you've got restrictions on that. It's really quite easy, Josh. Yeah. But so, so we're, I just don't understand father, how the donut thing. I don't understand. Donut, that. But the donut, donut thing is how, just like I'm a just making shit up and then all of a sudden no, you know, have to no, there's personal Why expectations, does, right? I haven't if said I want a motiv- machine gun. Your motivation, you could say I'm on the hunt to get vengeance for the guy who killed my father. I really enjoy eating um, mutton chops. But if you go, I have the strongest armor in the world, it's like, well, no, that affects the mechanics of the game now. And so I'm you- hungry and I'm looking for the best so donut. So Tommy was okay because he didn't say, he. if he said, I have a bag of donuts, you'd say no. Uh, we could discuss beforehand. I might say, no, uh, you're allowed to start, in the book, in the hand guide, you're allowed to start with certain rations. So if you if you're allowed to start with certain rations, you go yeah I've decided they're donuts. I'm like that's that's okay, that's okay. fine. Um, but if you say yeah I have a bazooka, you're like well no that's not the we're playing medieval <laughs> world. So and you so can, stage you can one you're talking about stage one. Stage characters. one is character creation, and so the and you thing can is- decide based on the player handbook how much how many things you're allowed to have. If he says I have a truck full of donuts, I'd be like no you can't have that. You're allowed three days worth of rations in what, according to the handbook or whatever. And so is there a bit of a sense on the first stage of character building mm. that everyone's trying to want? So I, the reason I picked the strongest armor is because I'm like well now I'm invincible. No, but you, you haven't read the do, rules. You can't do that. So the rule book uh, allows restrictions <laughs> mm-hmm. on what armor you can get. So if you read, if you read the book you bought off Amazon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. So so does everyone this. read the book or I was yeah, under the assumption needs to that read the, the master reads no, the book? No, everyone reads the player's hand guide. Okay. Yes. And that's standard, standard across book. everyone. Yeah, yeah. So you read the player's hand guide. How many and pages you cr- did you say? Uh, it was about 330, I think. <laughs> oh, there you go. But you've got to read it and know in character creation, it's like, well, you have certain stats as well. So your character might be good at um, – Athletics, right? So you get to decide. You roll the dice. Yeah. It determines how many points you okay. get. I'm yeah. understanding this in a big way. So it means that the... There, it, there are restrictions to your character creation. And so I can say a wizard mm-hmm. can cast spells. Mm-hmm. And so you pick I, the spells based on level one. And they were, that is in the handbook. That is in the handbook. And so there's a spell list. Yeah. And so I could go through. Yeah. I can learn all so the spells. Level one, wizard spells, Dungeons and Dragons. And I think he's allowed to have four or five or something to begin with, um, or maybe six or something. But so the donut thing's stupid though, because medieval they wouldn't have had donuts. It's a, but we can we can you know play. That's a with, modification. I can give you gu- yeah, I can give you guns if you want. You know, but it's it's a and modification. Then would, would you have to say if there's guns? How annoying would doing this with him be? <laughs> <laughs> Real fucking. Annoying, no, he needs right? to read the book. How many? So would, the fir- there's there's a lot of them. The yeah. first level. Yeah. Uh, there's cantrips can, and there's level one. Is there, is is there? Uh, so, I'm just on wizard spells level. Oh yeah, cantrips. Do you want yeah. level zero? Give me yeah, give me cantrips because cantrips are spells. So this is another rule. Cantrips are spells you can cast as many times as you want with no restrictions. Level one, you can only cast them a certain amount of times before oh, resting. Okay. What are so the cantrips? Gi- give me a, some cantrips. So you can have an acid splash. Yeah, so you can so just say we're in a scenario, right? You're in a tavern and it's, it's daytime, and you're having some beers, and you're talking about you're talking about donuts, mm. and you're talking uh-huh. about um, you know trying to find a cure uh, for yourself, um, and then all of a sudden a um, uh, a goblin breaks in and start and with with mm-hmm. knives and is approaching the the barman. Um, screaming and wailing. Who's right? saying you that? You can cut me. I'm the so you're the master. master. I'm creating the world. So you, I'm the computer. So you create the scene. So mm-hmm. you're saying the goblin comes in. He's got goblin knives. comes in. He's in. He's got two knives in his hand and he starts racing towards the barman. Uh, what do you guys do? And right? then it goes around in a circle. No, you guys can um, uh, in this in this circumstance. Oh, actually, it does. Yeah. So we would roll initiation. You'd roll the dice. And whoever rolls the um, the, the uh, higher number. So if you roll one and you roll a five, well then you're going first because your initiative Lower is number. higher. Yeah, yeah. So your initiative is higher in this this What's, circumstance. So you one roll, is eleven, isn't it? Oh, no, that's another. No, guy. one to twenty. The rice is, the that's dice nice. dice is one to die is one to twenty. So you've rolled a one and you've rolled a uh, five or whatever, yeah. and the goblins rolled an eight. So you get to go first. So what do you do? I won't get bogged down in his number. Now you have acid splash. That's one of your spells. You've also you've also chosen a weapon. Some good ones. You've also got fire bolt. You got fire bolt. Uh, Poison spray. Mm -hmm. Ray of frost. Yep. And a true strike. Okay. Ray of frost. Okay. Can you read ray of frost for me? And so I'm going to freeze the goblin. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see what the spell actually does. 
a beam of blue white light streaks toward a creature within range. Yep. Uh, Could does you it say, say what, the goblin what? wasn't in range? Uh, no, it's it's you can ask me. On so in hit- the game, you go, is he within range, or how far away? I'm in like three feet mm-hmm. or whatever. So I think that's a hundred uh, or sixty feet or something is the range for a goblin. Yeah, sixty feet. Yeah, yeah. And so, so you know that so, and then you, do you say he's been frozen? Uh, no. What it, read, read what the effect of the spell on a hit. It takes one d eight cold damage. Okay, one d eight cold damage. Um, and so yeah, speed is reduced by ten feet until the start of your next turn. Oh, that's good. So it slows it down. So that so was I've a done really, well. That was a really good roll. That was a really good thing. So um, <laughs> we're gonna you're gonna roll a d eight. Um, I'll do it online. D eight roll. So here we Google, go. So it's yeah, Google has it. Oh, I need a four one. and a three. No, oh, one, one, a four. four. So you rolled a four. Oh, no, we'll take this one, the yeah, six. You roll, so the, roll, you roll the, six. the six on a D8. So I have all these stats on a goblin. A goblin will have maybe eight health or something like that, like eight uh, hit points. Oh, really? It's like a video oh, game. So he's only got two left. He's, he's only fucked. got two left, yeah. But you won't know that, right? I'll know that as a dungeon master. I'll have, a, I'll have the stats behind mm-hmm. a shield, and, but behind like a little, you know, um, a cardboard protector. Guard, protector. And I'll know... The goblin, like I'll be able to say, oh, the goblin is looking really bad. Like he looks like he's about to die. And so, is he's, the goblin playing? The goblin is playing. Yeah, he's mm. he's no, he's me. Okay. I'm so the the dungeon. How many master, characters do you own? All everything, of them. everything else other than what you guys play. Okay, and you would add a character. NP, they're how called often? NPCs, how? non-playable characters. NPCs. I've heard of NPCs. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, but he talks about it in yeah. terms of we're this, all NPCs in the real world. Yeah, a, he thinks a I'm bunch an NPC. NPC. So you've got let's say so you've, a part of the you've got a bow, uh, an arrow, which is D8, and let's say it's D8 plus two, right? So you can attack, and you've got some knives, which are D6 plus two, mm-hmm. whatever, um, plus two points. So what do you want to attack the goblin? It's your turn. Do you want to do something else in the environment? There's a chandelier above. There's um, some bottles on the bar um, and there's beer still full. Um, you can do anything you want within the restrictions of the world. You can just put, you know, pull out a knife and attack him. Mm. You can get beer thrown on the ground to try and make him slip. As a player, the benefit? I, I, should know, I should know the two points. Like if I knife him, he's dead because he only had but two you points. Don't you don't know how many points. You can ask me the points, but you can, I'm telling you what I'm doing as a dungeon master. I've got a point system so when something happens, I know mm. determined. And if Tommy kills, if I kills knife him, him, he's frozen. He's your, a bit frozen. It's slower. Yeah, he's not it's frozen. He's slowed down. Yeah. Okay, he's slowed down. Yeah. Getting close. He had knives. So if I try to knife him and he knifes me back. Yeah. What about if, if I threw some acid? Miss. Threw some acid. Acid, it will speed it up. Can you throw acid? He as can't. Tommy's- no. So you're, oh, I don't know what uh, class you are. So there's different classes. So there are wizards, there are um, sorcerers, there are uh, fighters. There are um, uh, druid, ra- barbarian. Range- yeah, druid, barbarian, I don't know if I've got the yeah. yeah, but you don't like non-fiction. Actually, you don't <laughs> like fiction. fiction so yeah, yeah. you hate Made fiction. Up shit. Yeah. So anyway, this is that's a that's a uh, it's, let's just say you're like Legolas, like you're an archer, you're a ranger, right? Yeah. So you're yeah, essentially someone who you know is in uh, the forest a lot and works with animals, and you probably got you might even have a pet with you. Let's just say you wanted a pet. Mm. Beforehand, I think in the rule book you're allowed a pet, a familiar. Um, so you could say, yeah, I have a trusty dog with me or whatever, or I have a bird that's on my shoulder or whatever, and you could get the bird to do things. So Can I say it goes dark, there's a moon, I'm a werewolf? No, you can't do that <laughs> because I'm creating the world you're playing How within about the world. We, we get you back on it's after like, Josh has read 300 yeah, plus pages? No, but it's yeah. like... Imagine you're playing a video game. Yeah, you, you don't determine, control the world. You, you don't control the world. But I'm, I know the I'm weapons the video and game. Stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you, so can, but did you, you can buy certain weapons. Could I ask, is it night time? No, I uh, I said it was You've daytime. You've already said it. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah, it's daytime. So but it's let's true. let's finish this 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 story out. Um, so, yeah, the goblin has now just been attacked. He's slowed down. He's pretty shocked. Well, I'm going to shoot an arrow because I've got I'm an archer. Great. So you shoot an arrow at him. Um, I want you to roll... I think a D, let's say D6 plus two. So he's pulling up a By the way, app if, or something on Google. Yeah, so Google. So you can roll. So D6, just press roll. Press roll. There's, oh, oh no. sorry, sorry. And then that press one. Roll, yeah, press he's got to press, yeah, press roll. That one. You've uh, rolled a three. three. 
Oh, actually, no, I have to, I, I fucked this up. You have to roll D, D20 first. Why? So D20 determines whether you, your attack hits or not. Um, that's something I forgot. If anyone's it's a D&D lot of time player. for people that would even you understanding this shit. No, it's because I guess I'm like on the spot and having to uh, having to do it. Um, if you're a master, that's a- yeah, exactly. No, I'm having to do it without the dice and without the process. So I'm trying to like explain the game. So D20 determines whether you, your attack hits or not, and then you roll for damage afterwards. So uh. let's just say you roll D20 and you hit. Yeah. Um, so I didn't and then do you attack a for damage and you rolled six and you no you didn't I think some spells you don't have to I'm not sure if that one yeah I think you do but um, you roll d20 yes you hit because sometimes you miss you go mm. nut you miss him the arrow flies off and it smashes through the window and kills someone outside damn it um, no you hit you kill him he dies the bar guys says oh guys. That was the best. Thanks for saving my bar. Goblins have been so bad. In fact, there's a camp of them outside. Um, here's 10 gold each for killing that goblin. There's another 500 gold from the town if you guys go kill the goblins. And you go, great. You can accept that mission. You go, as a no, team? I'm not killing anymore. Yeah, as a team. It's better to stick together. Yeah, um, and so now you either go on the adventure to kill the goblins or you go, no, nah, we're going to stay in town drinking or no. Nah, I need to find a cure. I'm going to try find a, mm-hmm. a mage in the town. So it's store. It's world building. <laughs> yeah. You need to know it's the too rules. Too much for Josh. You need to know too the much rules. For me, to be you need to roll the <laughs> dice. Anyway, I want to play. I'm surprised. I, I swear I've seen but in movies they get dressed up. But keep in mind, before I started half assed explaining this, I said I don't think this is the game for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think improv, improv. I think I want to get into. Yeah. Right. There's I, a game that's been going for 35 years. <laughs> I don't think it's non-stop though. No, 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 no it's not. It's not non-stop. They've only yeah. the maximum amount of time that they haven't played a D and D session is three weeks. That's pretty good. So over the thirty-five years, I'll sit down and do sessions. But it's just an. Wouldn't it be great to get them on the show? Game. Whereabouts do they live? I've got probably no American. Yeah, the start. And they probably don't them. come out of their house. But much. that'd be easy. We can go to them anyway. Oh man, I feel so overwhelmed having to do a crash course in D and D in something yeah. so nuanced and yeah, it deep. is very nuanced to one person who doesn't like that world and one person who had no interest. In it. <laughs> well, I didn't know whether I liked the it's world. It's such a difficult show. For me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Simon Teller, funny boy. Oh boy, don't come. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's. Uh, Soon, starting Feb. Mm-hmm. Can people get so. tickets yet? Or? Yeah, yeah. SimonTaylorFunnyBoy.com yeah. on my website. We'll there, was, there was no one D&D in the show. All right. Well, maybe we can do a, get you back and do a proper game. Oh, we could live what? stream Absolutely D&D. Not. <laughs> Absolutely not. If I read the book, to be Absolutely honest. Absolutely He doesn't want to play. <laughs> if you don't want to. You guys can play it at your book Would club. you play Sebs? Uh, how long does the session last? <laughs> it is lots of that time. Play. Listen, if you're not super enthusiastic to play D and D and not enthusiastic to read the book and learn the rules, then don't watch play. watch Lord of the Rings, Josh, and then mm, no. Uh, what about um? What's <laughs> That's the, easier than reading the book? What's the honest. what's the one? What's the um the the disease? Book, the pandemic. pandemic. Yeah, that's fun. I've, I've heard of pandemic. I pandemic's think pandemic's a cooperative game. That pandemic. one's Can you really look good. that up? I'm going to buy the, the board game. All right, it's a daily talk show. Uh, thank you, Simon Taylor. Thanks, uh, bro. If you enjoy the show, leave us a <laughs> podcast review. Hi at the Daily Talk Show. Please don't tell com. me I messed up rules in D and D. Oh wasn't yeah, please able do. To do it. Yeah, email us. <laughs> I, well, I know I missed a whole bunch of stuff. It was so hard to. Yeah, there's do a, a lot of pressure. Book. I can. You did well. Thanks. I mean, we don't know. Yeah, hmm. so that's why. I thought. You I should have just said, it's a role-playing game, Josh. Read the book. That's what should have happened today. <laughs> <laughs> Instead. <laughs> 15 minutes. Yeah. All right. Was that all it was? All right. See you tomorrow, guys. See Thanks. You guys.